thanks for the invitation. I'm going to talk a little bit about podcasts from my point of view, sort of. My name is Rasmus, and I come from something called The Lake Radio, which is uh, an online radio station for uh, music, sounds, uh, everything in between. You can go to thelakeradio.com at any time and hear something. There's like a randomized stream of sounds and music coming from there. And uh, at The Lake Radio, we also, we also uh, produce a lot of podcasts, both our own and podcasts for other people. And that's mostly my job. So I produce a lot of the podcasts. And I guess that's why I'm here today or one of the reasons I was invited to talk about podcasts. Um, so I was thinking a lot about what would be relevant for you. Um, and since this is a conservatory and also sort of an art school, I'm going to just quickly show you some photos or some covers from some podcasts that I helped make just to show you that uh, will maybe give you sort of an impression of what what kind of stuff we do here at the Lake Radio. So a lot of music and music podcasts, a lot of podcasts about art, a lot of stuff, um, different kinds of things. Yeah, some about music, some about sound art. There's a, a, a radio program called DJ Breves Breukas, which is, which is like a program where you can call in and talk to the host and he plays music. There's one podcast for the art schools called Royals that just came out. A podcast about Ilse Marie Pell, a Danish electronic composer that might be fun for you to listen to. A podcast about sustainability, ugly vegetables. A podcast that I made with a guy called Jan who's sitting over there who works here. Um, that's a picture of him interviewing a guy about a record player. So all sorts of things, a lot to do with music. Um, but I, today I was going to talk about how the podcast can be a medium for art because I thought that would be exciting for you or maybe relevant for you. Uh, the title is a little academic, so I wrote it in like a really academic font, uh, Times New Roman. But we can also turn it into a question. First, we can turn it into a less academic uh, visual way of presenting it, but we can maybe ask this question. Can podcasts be art or how can podcasts be art? That's basically what I want to talk about today. And maybe more importantly or more relevant for you, could your art be a podcast? Could your next music or art project uh, take the form of a podcast? Okay, so this is the main question today. And I'm going to give some examples of that. But um, first, let's look at how sort of the podcast cliche is or like what, what most podcasts are like and what the podcast medium is being used for typically. So this would for me be like a typical American uh, podcast and it's actually one of the most listened to podcasts in the world. It's been going on for many years. It's called Stuff You Should Know with these two guys. I'm um, just going to play like a short segment of it just so that we're sort of that we agree on maybe uh, what what uh, what podcasts are mostly used for or the podcast medium. Hey and welcome to the podcast. I'm Josh Clark. There's Charles W. Chuck Bryan over there, and Jerry's out there running around somewhere. We just gave her a hot foot. It was hilarious. Uh, and this is stuff you should know. That's right. Uh, our continuing exploration of pain. <laughs> What else have we talked about with pain? Uh, we did one on the pain scales okay. a couple of years ago, and uh, then we did one on something about perceiving pain. Well, this one, this one, uh, this is just totally stuff you should know then because we did a bunch of like more niche stuff, and now we're going back and doing like the umbrella topic. Right. And we're talking about pain, which um, is a super ancient, old, evolutionary um, – trait, I guess, that's shared basically throughout all living things. I would say it's a pretty fair guess. Is it? I think so, yeah, because um, there's something that pain, pain specifically, which is this, we'll get into defining it and how hard that is in a second, but um, it seems to be a, a fairly universal, 
almost universal process where our body says, hey, there's something really bad going on, say, on your hand. So move your hand away from wherever it is in space right now, and hopefully that will help keep it from getting further damage. Like pain is a signal saying, um, do something, dummy, move. And it's, it, I mean, that's, that's, you know, you see it in, in basically any animal we've ever encountered, including the beaver and the porcupine. That's right. And by the way, we did other people who can't feel pain yeah. 10 years ago. Yeah, so this, for me, this is an example of uh, a quite boring podcast, actually. Uh, even the guy, you could hear even the guy is a little bit bored. He thinks it's much more than 10 years ago that they made an episode about something else. Um, yeah, so t it's not to bash this kind of podcast format, but you know, Two middle-aged white guys in flannel shirts talking about sort of like pseudo science Wikipedia type knowledge is is there's a lot of that. There's it's 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 great. Sometimes it can be very interesting, but there's a lot of it. And there's it's this is the way podca the podcast medium is being used in in ninety five percent of the cases. People uh, are not ninety five percent of the cases, but a lot of uh, cases. Uh, people talking about this kind of stuff, sort of imitating radio or something like that. Two two people talking about a subject uh, to a listener, um, enjoying themselves uh, in some sort of studio environment uh, so that it sounds good, crisp, um, comfortable. Um, and yeah, there's a lot of that going on. Of course, there's also uh, a lot of podcasts that are much more exciting, uh, storytelling podcasts with all these kinds of, uh, for instance, there's a lot of like true crime podcasts, uh, telling stories, real life documentary stories about murders and morbid things. Um, there's yeah, more, more true crime criminology podcast, true crime chronicle. Someone knows something, Thing. There's a lot of these, a lot of these. It's almost as if the podcast world is actually just flooded with true crime podcasts. It seems there's a lot of podcasts out there that want to make it really cozy for you to just have a cup of coffee in the morning, get a little bit of knowledge what's going on, something very safe. So, I mean, murders aren't safe in that way, but it becomes very safe when we're sort of just like handed this Wikipedia-like knowledge through uh, two people maybe even drinking coffee while they uh, talk about it. And it's very much imitating radio, the sort of radio morning talk show, all these formats that we know uh, and have listened to for 50, 80 years or something. So, yeah, I mean, and this is very, uh, this is also me being a little bit tired of a lot of the stuff that's out there. And it's, I'm sorry if I sound arrogant, but it's just, there's so many true crime podcasts I want to talk about uh, what a podcast essentially is. And because if we know what a podcast essentially is, we can talk about what the potential of podcasts and what podcasts can be and uh, imagine together what, what podcasts can be. Podcasts have sort of just inherited all of, all of these characteristics from radio, all these genres from radio. My point is just that... Um, there are many other possibilities in the medium than to do radio and radio-like products or to, to, uh, to distribute radio and radio-like products. So essentially, a podcast essentially starts as an MP3 or a sound file on someone's computer, and they put that to a cloud, to some kind of podcast host, and that podcast host uh, generates what is called an RSS feed for you. And the RSS feed... Technology is something we use uh, for blogs and news uh, subscription services. The architecture of social media is often an RSS feed or many RSS feeds. But a, a, a podcast is basically just an RSS feed with sound files attached to it. So when you upload your files to this host, it generates a feed that you can distribute in many ways. Um, and the most common way to distribute this feed is through uh, Apple or iTunes, which is sort of like the biggest database for podcasts in the world. 
And when you uh, submit your RSS feed, your podcast to to Apple, it's available in in many podcast apps that that look to Apple for for podcasts. You can also um, submit this podcast to something like Spotify or Google Podcasts or Amazon or all these other apps that are out there that people use. Um, and when you've done that, you can basically have everyone with a smartphone be your listener. So it's it's very easy like that. It's very accessible. I've drawn some headphones here because it's very much a headphone culture. It's very much uh, where people listen to to their podcasts. Um, these are some statistics, Danish statistics about podcast listening. Um, you can see that still around half of, of podcasts are listened to in people's homes. Uh, that can be on speakers or on a kitchen radio or on headphones or something like that. But also home, 58%. And then it says bike slash walk, 30%. So people who are like commuting uh, or walking, uh, riding the bike somewhere, uh, 30% of the listening, 26% of the listening takes place in people's cars. Um 25% takes place in a bus or train. I'm actually saying this wrong. It's not 25% of all podcast listening, but 25% of the listeners in this survey listen to it on a bus or a train. That's why these percentages don't add up to 100 because people, one person can listen to podcasts more than one place. So it's just to say that this says something about people's habits and where they listen to podcasts. So when people are working, 18% listen while they work. 11% listen while they exercise in the gym or anywhere. Um, so it's just to say that that podcast is very much like a listening habit that people take with them uh, many places that they go or uh, sort of incorporate in their everyday life. So when they're doing the dishes, when they're doing laundry, when they're cooking, when they're biking, when they're shopping, when they're working, when they're exercising, commuting, uh, people can have these... Um, people will go into this headphone space and listen to podcasts. So that's, that's just to give you an idea of what the possibilities are and what the potential of podcasts could be. This is what you're dealing with. And when you have this, I think the possibilities are actually endless instead of just making radio and radio-like products. So in other words, podcasts are essentially a way of distributing sound files in a universal cross-platform manner easily accessible to most. I mean, people who have a smartphone and access to the internet. And it's quite easy. I mean, of course, you need to know what an app is and you need to know how to find an, an podcast on your iPhone, but it's it's getting more and more easy for people to, uh, to listen to it. More than 25% of Danes listen to a podcast weekly. And that's a lot. To compare the same statistic for... Netflix, for instance, is 37%. So podcasts are getting up there alongside Netflix and other things that can seem sort of like they're everywhere and that everyone does it. I was just thinking about other potential uses of podcasts. For instance, we all know that President Trump, Donald Trump, likes to use Twitter for a lot of stuff. And people actually go to his Twitter to see what he's uh, up to and what messages he has for the world. Why couldn't the president of the United States or the president of any country have like a weekly podcast where they spoke to the people? We all know these TV speeches. We all know these press conferences that Mette Frederiksen, the prime minister of Denmark has. She could also maybe have, have a podcast um, where she spoke to, to the population every week or something like that. That would be exciting, I think. Travel guides, it's a far out idea, but maybe you could do it. Teaching, I've stumbled upon a lot of podcasts that are just like lectures uh, distributed as podcasts. I think there's a huge potential in that. Also, in these times of online teaching, e-learning, stuff like that, I think the podcast medium could be used for that in, 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 in a greater sense. Um, propaganda. Some podcasts might be propaganda, but it's still uh, quite an effective medium. So should be used more for polit political propaganda, I think or I fear. Um, hypnosis is very close to, to, I mean, it would be quite easy, I think, to hypnotize someone through a podcast. So that's also just a potential way of using it. Uh, augmented reality experiences. I mean, almost all podcast listening 
is sort of augmented reality because if we look at the statistics from before, podcast listening takes place in all these different kinds of everyday uh, situations. So imagine you're riding your bike and you hear a podcast. If you don't have like these super tight noise canceling headphones, you will still be able to hear the traffic around you, for instance. And when you are doing the dishes in your kitchen and you're listening to podcasts on your kitchen radio, you'll still hear the sound of your kitchen and you will hear a podcast on top of that. Like you will hear a podcast on top of the traffic sounds when you're in traffic and you will hear the podcast sounds on top of the uh, sounds in the uh, fitness center or where you where you go when you uh, exercise or listen and listen to your podcast. So it's just saying that almost every podcast listening experience is actually sort of an augmented reality experience because the podcast or the sound product, the podcast is put on top of your, your, uh, the situation you're already in. Um, and I don't know about you, but I've many times listened to a podcast while on my bike and all of a sudden there's an ambulance or something in the, or a car that honks or something in the podcast. And I turn my head because I think, Someone is about to run me over. And you can also play with that intentionally. Once I experienced this sound installation, which was in a bathtub during a festival here in Copenhagen, it was a site-specific, it wasn't a podcast, but it was a podcast producer who made it. It was a, sound, a site-specific sound installation in a bathtub where you uh, went into a bathtub, took your clothes off, went into the bathtub, put headphones on, and then you listened to this sound piece or sound work that was recorded in that room. So every, every, um, every sound that you heard sounded like it was, that it was present in that room. So it was almost impossible to tell what was going on in your headphones and what was going on in the room outside of your headphones. Um, and at one point, uh, the door sort of, someone just opens the door rapidly and runs into the room and I almost fell out of the bathtub because I was so scared, but it was just uh, the sound recording of a person doing that. And there was no one there except for me. So it's just to say that there's a huge uh, potential in sort of playing with these augmented uh, reality experiences. You can, you can put a sound experience in, on top of a situation. And if you know what situation the person is in or the type of situation the listener is in, you can... Uh, intentionally play with uh, these things melting together so a lot of a lot of different potentials for podcasts that go beyond what we're used to listening to in 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 podcast of course and many people using the medium for things similar to this or things like this um, but i just think the potential is much larger and um, i would love to see more uh, podcasts not sound like radio um, but sound completely different and use the medium in different ways. Because as we go back, this is basically, this, this is the architecture, this is what we're dealing with, and we can use this architecture for many, many things. So why not use podcasts for your next music art project? It sounds like in a commercial almost. What podcasts do well? I think people really like it because it's on demand. For instance, compared to radio, in the olden days, before the internet and stuff like that, uh, radio was not on demand. It was something being transmissioned at a certain time. And if you didn't hear it, you might catch the rerun. But if you didn't catch that, then it was gone afterwards and you were it was nowhere to be found. Today, radio is always distributed on demand afterwards through podcasts. So in that way, uh, it, it's sometimes the, sometimes the same thing. Um, Podcasts were also up until recently always free. Um, many people have, or many people are monetizing on podcasts and have these uh, apps where you have to pay to listen to podcasts, but still a lot of, and most podcasts are, are free, um, which makes them very accessible to, to people because it's, um, yeah, you just have to have a smartphone or some other device connected to the internet to listen to a, to a podcast. It's mobile. Uh, often people listen on, on a smartphone like this or they listen on some other part, some other transportable device. And uh, that's also part of the appeal, I guess, um, that you can take it anywhere you go. You can take it to the gym. You can take it on the bus. You can take it on your bike. Take it grocery shopping. Uh, anywhere you go, you can, uh, you can bring it. 
Um, it's also, from a production point of view, a very democratic medium. Almost anyone can produce a podcast. You basically don't need more than a, actually a smartphone to record a podcast and distribute it. There are many ways today to... Uh, there are services, free, free apps, actually, you can download where you can record and distribute a podcast in a manner of, of minutes, actually. Um, so it's become quite easy. I mean, you can still make a huge... Uh, professional production that will uh, that will take time but you can also in your bedroom record a podcast and send it out to the world and actually have a successful podcast without even spending any money on it and there are also many examples of that um, and podcasts are very engaging because you mostly listen to them on your headphones and what you what you're listening to is mostly voices talking to you. Um, most podcasts are made up of of many different sounds, but like the main sound in most podcasts are a voice or a, uh, uh, an amount of voices speaking directly to a listener. That's very engaging. That someone says, "Hello, listener. Let me tell you about this and this and this." Um, and it's very present because. Uh, podcasts are some of uh, one of the you know uh, audio mediums where audio is actually most uh, present or near the the listener because most podcasts, if they're produced in that way, are recorded. Like for instance, this microphone is very close to my mouth, uh, like five centimeters or so, and if I recorded a podcast like this and you played it back on your headphones, that would make my mouth be like five or six centimeters from your ear, which is very intimate, which is very um, engaging because it's very seldom that you have a person speak into your ear on a distance of like five centimeters. Uh, that's mostly people you know very well that get to do that, and they will usually whisper in your ear. But if someone speaks in a low uh, voice into your ear on a five centimeter distance it's pretty hard not to listen very closely to what they say and that's sort of like the the power of of radio but it's also the power of of podcasts and um, if you use that uh, if you use that in a in a in the right way you can almost do make people do anything uh, or you can at least make them listen to anything that's also why i said that that podcast on radio are very close to hypnosis because if you speak into, if you say to someone very closely into their ear, buy this product or vote for this person or go out and do this, uh, it's very likely that they will uh, at least get that message and uh, maybe act on it, but at least uh, it will go <laughs> straight into their uh, brain um, in a very intimate and direct way. There is sort of the possibility to be this voice inside people's head when you when you do a podcast or make a podcast, and that's a very powerful position to be in. Uh, also, in in the sort of noisy uh, media landscape that we have today, um, it's it's a very privileged uh, and very powerful position to to be a voice inside people's head. That's a very hard place to get in because we're all uh, we all have our guards up against advertisements and people wanting to sell us stuff and all of that um, and people who want our votes and our opinions um, so if you can get inside people's head you can actually make them well it's a very powerful position to be in that's my point um, and the podcast is also a very good medium to sort of uh, place people in different situations or spaces because as I said almost every podcast listening experience will be in a kind of augmented reality experience because it will be um, a situation on top of a situation, sort of. Um, many radio programs and podcasts are recorded in pretty acoustically uh, dead spaces, like radio studios or something like that. So you will mostly hear a voice in, a, in, a, in an acoustically neutral space and you will get that on top of the space that you're in as a listener. So if you're in your kitchen doing the dishes, and you listen to a podcast recorded 
in an acoustically dead radio studio, you'll just have that voice on top. But you can also sit in a quiet room with your headphones on and listen to a podcast that's recorded in a very lively, acoustically lively space. It could be recorded in a cathedral and it would have the acoustics of a cathedral and you would have all of a sudden you would be acoustically you would be in a cathedral in your living room uh, or you could situate people in all sorts of space and you can also situate people in imaginary spaces and that's maybe the most exciting part and what a, a lot of podcasts do um, they make up these imaginary spaces where some sort of story takes place um, and if the listener closes Cl uh, closes their eyes, they will uh, be able to almost completely imagine themselves in this space uh, because of what they're listening to. So it's it's very powerful in that way. And um, and if you haven't had, I hope that you one day have one of these sort of completely weird escapistic experiences where you are completely taken or transported to an, another place through listening to uh, to a podcast. Um, of course, you can always be transported when listening to music to various imaginary spaces but i think it's also quite fun to listen to or quite an experience to listen to a podcast that takes place in a very concrete room or complete uh, concrete situation acoustic situation that that can take you there so if you close your eyes you can maybe be on top of the mount everest or something like that or two thousand meters beneath the ocean or you could be in the middle of new york city or wherever um it's it's quite easy uh, to do that uh, with sound it's quite easy to construct uh, imaginary spaces or very concrete spaces um and transport listeners there so that's some of the things that podcasts do well and that's some of the things that you can um exploit or use um when you produce pro podcasts and maybe also if you produce podcasts with a sort of more of an artic Uh, artistic uh, agenda instead of maybe a let's say a storytelling podcast a true crime podcast or a science radio show or something like that so there are many different things to to uh, take advantage of but i would like to play some examples of podcasts that could maybe more be put in a category called headphone art or podcast art or i don't know what to call it but maybe seeing this this uh, space this voice inside people's head this space that you can put the listener in see that more as an exhibition space or an art space and the first example is quite uh well that's basically what it does i'm just going to play something and then i'm going to explain what it is later This is a gallery. This is the removal of walls. This is the removal of white paint. This is the removal of polished floor. This is the removal of windows. This is the removal of high ceilings. This is the removal of foundations. This is the removal of hard edges. This is the removal of the individuals. This is the removal of pure material. This is a gallery. Welcome in. <laughs> So this was just like the first yeah, minute or so of the first episode of a podcast called Ocean, Glitter and the Tides, uh, which is a, an, a fairly new podcast series on the Lake Radio, which, as you can hear, takes all of the stuff I just said very uh, literally. It is literally a uh, an art space uh distributed as a podcast um, and as the voice here says uh, this is deconstructing the the 
sort of art typical art space, which is the white cube. So it's it's the end of white walls, it's the end of polished polished floor and high ceilings and all of these characteristics of rooms that we're used to experiencing art in uh, or sort of the, the cliche of the art gallery white cube. So it's a deconstruction of that and it's sort of like um, a, res a resetting of, of the whole um, situation to experience. Yeah, so Ocean Glitter and the Tides is, is a very good example of, of someone reimagining uh, both the the way podcasts are being used or a way of using podcasts at the same time reimagining the the art space uh, to not be a physical space uh, with walls uh, the voice says this is the end of pure material so instead of materials walls foundations buildings ceilings floors it's paint <laughs> it's um it's it's an imaginary space somehow, somehow, and it's a it's it's an it's a space with endless uh, possibilities. I'll play an excerpt from later in this uh, episode because, as you heard, there was some guitar music, soft guitar music, and when the soft guitar music ends, we come to this situation. by the circumstances casually handed out by the solar structure of it all, the burning, the melting. It has nothing to do with the climate, apocalypse, etc. I would just really like for the sun to become cold and yet invigorating instead of what it is doing at the moment. All this friction in the skin that it creates. No matter how I'm imagining what will happen in the admittedly preferred version of everything, hypothetical as it undeniably must be at the moment, I keep thinking that it would be pleasantly weird if my body was cold instead of all this hectic beating. Cold evenings keep me alert about the madness of everything. There is an anchor in the susceptibility of the skin. You were someone with tight skin under your blue eyes and another one with grayish stubbles. I understand if someone might find me a bit annoying these days. These lines and get a little grumpy with me. You can go, and go well. Send me letters filled with powder. This dangling fragile branch is sizzling with green deceit. Banished by the tree trunk and its swarm of flies, dressed in bitter and brown, hardened and tired. From one big no, all of reality's decline has sprung. The lush loins of the sun-nurtured root systems have transferred the marrow to the offspring, to the branch, to my still fiber-covered bones, and now the outcast is being shed from the core, hits the ground. But burned and powdered, we could call the outcast an ashen beauty ripe for sniffing, right? Not to mention the decoction, the essensified liquid that could stem from this newly shunned neon log. Whoops, but here comes the problem again. The self-promotion, the bragging, the smoldering, the calling myself neon. I can't stand, and I can't stand it. 
Oh, if you could flick me out of sentences like once upon a time there was a little boy. Annoyed yet, I understand. Of all people, I'm for example thinking myself that it would be a shame if it's a necessity to have to get so shed or sold by other people's cockpits and hearts, etc. But so fucking sharp is this compass needle, apparently. Never look away from that, etc. Pessimist and fortune teller. So then what? when you don't know how to build up a laughter like that, now that you are not capable of avoiding attaching the innermost turning points, the most supreme cornerstones to these faraway living blue and grayish others, when this awkward starting point must be recognized, what fucking good is it then to ramble about a different kind of sun? You have what you have, you don't have a rewritable myth in real time. Okay, so I did what you can never do, press the pause button on a work of art, but that's one of the downsides to uh, distributing art as a podcast. There's a pause button, um, which is also a good thing because you can pause it and, and listen to it later. But um, yeah, a normal radio podcast voice would sound really good. It would be, or the ideal podcast or radio voice would sound really good. It would be recorded through a good microphone, it would be a voice that wasn't nervous. It would be a voice that um, uh, was confident. It would be a voice that was um, that would never hesitate. That would also always know what to say. Um, there are at least a lot of these kinds of voices: very trained, very confident, uh, clean, smooth-sounding voices in in podcast and radio. This voice on the contrary, is a voice that uh, has something much more abstract to say. It's a voice that's, uh, that has a body that is both uh, maybe nervous or that hesitates, um, that, is, uh, that it, it comes out of a mouth that has a lot of mouth sounds and a lot of breathy sounds. And, and every, all of this uh, contributes to this being a very intimate experience. Um, uh, nervous, trembling, breathy voice on a very short distance of maybe a few centimeters. And you're not really used to that. You're not really used to people speaking like that into your ear. And uh, when you hold up against what the voice we heard before said when it presented this this podcast series, Ocean Glitter and the Tides. Um, this, this voice was not reading or um, performing this, this, this text or these words in a, in a white cube. It was doing it in a, in a room without paint, without ceiling, without a floor, without walls, um, and so on. Um, because, I mean, we could have probably also gone to some sort of gallery and heard a voice perform something like this, but we would be um, very much affected by the physical surroundings and the space that we would be in, uh, the walls and so on. And we would also be able to see the body belonging to this voice or the voice that this, uh, the body that this voice belongs to. Um, and there would be all of these external things uh, going on that are bypassed when we get it, uh, when we experience it like this. So for me, it's a very powerful way of, uh, of engaging a listener and to, to present exactly this type of work, a voice work, one might call it. Um, I'm going to play another kind of voice work that is different from this one. That is also a comment on a lot of things, but we can maybe talk about that uh, afterwards. This is from a podcast called Podcast for Santa's Kunst, which in English would be Podcast for Contemporary Art. And it's a podcast that the Lake Radio makes together with or in collaboration with the Museum for Contemporary Art in Roskilde. 
very much a building and it's very much a place and it's in Roskilde and it's in an old building that has walls and a high ceiling and white walls and a floor and a foundation and all of these things. And this podcast series is thought as a continuation of that space or a uh, a supplement to that space and also sometimes as a art space of its own or in its own right. So sometimes uh, we commission works of art for the podcast that are never actually exhibited in the museum. So this is one uh, example of that. And we did it uh, during the coronavirus lockdown in, in March and April, where we asked uh, different artists around the world to, to make sound works for this podcast that uh, around the theme of isolation because a lot of people were very isolated um, around the world uh, very much so in Italy where where this um, where the author of the, the, the artist behind this work uh, is from Davide Saborani who, who lives in Milan and um, who sent us this work called Safe and I'm just going to um, play some of it and then talk a little bit more about it and I hope you're wearing headphones uh, out there Hello I am safe Dear subscriber How are you feeling today? I'm well aware that you have preferred to postpone this moment. But given the situation, I was forced to come. It was a matter of extreme urgency. A code YMD, they said. So I couldn't really say no. Disappearing is now forbidden by law. So here I am. And before we start this brief encounter, I must ask you to stop whatever you are doing. It would be better if you sit comfortably, but you can also stand if you prefer. Pause yourself and close your eyes. Can you do this for me? Good. So, how are you doing considering these circumstances? I've heard you've been stuck inside a certain space for a while now. I wonder if you're getting along with it. Whether you've discovered a new corner, or perhaps found something that you thought was lost forever. It's a good time for mapping a space. To feel it. To really feel it. Forget about those FaceTime breakfasts and dinners the Pilates and meditation lessons uploaded by a faraway teacher. Forget about making bread or learning how to cook the black cod emancipation extended. I'm here because I want you to focus a bit more on your solitary self. With me, of course. While keeping your eyes closed, Please locate yourself in your place. Locate the walls, the table, the chairs, the doors, the bookshelves, if you have any. Now, come back in and imagine a duplicate layer of yourself. A second identical layer, but this layer is cloudy weightless. Drift into this new layer and give yourself a little push upward. Whoosh! And here you are. Look at yourself, meaning the layer you left behind, underneath your ethereal feet. Look at you from the outside, leaving that heavy matter. Those muscles and bones, bacteria and shit, and whatever else you might be hiding in that body of yours. Can you give this new self a color? A pastel one, 
I would suggest. Now, with your real eyes closed and your imaginary ones open, leave that body there and take an airy stroll in the place where you're stuck. You could try taking a slow jump from corner to corner, like an indoor cloud or a breath, like an indoor cloud or a breeze of air. You can bump your head against the ceiling and feel nada. But let's focus. Please bring this new shape of you toward the bedroom. Lean on the door for a while and look at your bed. You were there last night, weren't you? Did you sleep well? I did not. I am sure you want to know why. Please keep your eyes closed and lie on the bed for a moment. Because I want to tell you something. Even if this should be all about you. But given the circumstances, I need a listener too, you know? So. The trick I came up with to help me fall asleep is more challenging these days when a large part of the population is locked down. Usually when I close my eyes, I try to remember all the strangers' faces I saw during the day. Those I met on the street, on the metro, at the bar where I usually grab a cappuccino before entering the center, Passers-by, couriers, old people, children, shopkeepers, drivers, cyclists, fathers in baby wraps, people who collect their dog's shit, and the homeless people camped near the main entrance of the center. Are you still there? Please keep your eyes closed and wait. You needn't go anywhere, right? So all these faces that usually slip off my cornea have become something precious. Very necessary, I would say. I'm grasping for all those faces that I probably won't see anymore, plus some minor detail like an unstitched seam, a hairstyle, a missing finger, a weird pair of shoes, a gesture, etc., have become drops of a sleeping drug not yet invented. I realized that I had enough of forgetting, that I wanted to hang on, to remember something that I usually let pass almost indifferently. It was an interesting exercise. Do you know why? Because I punctually passed out of the third or fourth face, and, inevitably, all the others remain there, suspended, waiting forever to be remembered. I wonder what happens to all those forgotten faces eaten by sleep. Are they rescued by dreams? Will they come back to ask for more attention? I would probably spend the next few nights on this matter. Think about it for a moment. Try to remember the last unfamiliar face you passed. The one you laid your eyes on for at least five seconds. This morning, on my way to the center, I met a pair of glasses pushed against an FFP3 mask and also a pair of frightened, nervous eyes peeking out from a scarf twisted at least ten times around the person's mouth. I'm recollecting a flock of terrorized eyes looking into mine, 
trying to understand what my next step will be. Eyes that tell me not to get too close. Do you have it? Do I? These days, eyes seem more useful than a strong pair of hands. What about you? What's the last stranger's face you remember? I will give you five seconds while you're still there. An aerial you, looking at the bed with your real eyes closed. One, two, three, four, five. Thank you. You've just saved a stranger's face from oblivion. You may probably get a chance to meet again in this upcoming mm, era. Okay. For now, your cloudy double can get up, move away from the bedroom, and head to a window. If the place you're in doesn't have any windows, just imagine one. The cool thing about this exercise is that you can envision things you can't afford or are extinct. Like the Salvador Mundi. Where is he now? Especially that we need him. Or a passenger pigeon. Please take your left hand and place it against the glass in front of you. Focus on your fingertips and feel the glass. It is fragile and hard. Technically, it is a non-crystalline amorphous solid. While keeping that hand in contact with that unsolved problem of solid state theory, raise your imaginary sight. Look out of the window and... and... And now what? I would need you to imagine something else again, to envision a new scenery, an ideal one, like that Greek beach where you felt you belonged to the world, or that field full of flowers that you ran across ages ago. In short, a comfortable and safe mental place where to take shelter in case of danger. But, my dear subscriber, I have to be honest with you. I'm really not prepared for this. When the center called me back in the middle of the night just a few nights ago, I was struggling to fall asleep. Imagining taking a protection mask off an old woman's face to uncover a reassuring smile. Given the circumstances, given the situation, difficult, strange, confusing, terrible, I mean, we all have read science fiction, right? We have all watched at least one catastrophic movie, like fucking Contagion. I mean, they should have called it The Bat, The Pig, The Chef, and The Gwinnie. But what the actual fuck? Language, I know. Language. Please excuse me. As if on top of all of this, I should lose my job, right? At the center, they just told us to be positive and to spread good vibes only. Steal some Zen ideas here and there and mix them together, they said. Be creative and convincing, like an immune and untouchable god. You will see. Like a flock of baby ducks, the subscribers will follow. 
And here I am, a lost duckling in the muddiest of the ponds. Keep your eyes closed, please, and listen to me. I'm sorry, dear subscriber, believe me. I'm trying to keep it cool. But this line between before and after is cutting me in half. What will the world be like after this? How will this affect us? How will we touch a foreign surface, a new unfamiliar body, far away so close? For how long? While borders are becoming more solid than ever, we are all sharing the same fears and hopes. Every day we sink and resurface, sink and resurface. Now let's take a deep breath together and go back to where we were. To that layer you left there alone, motionless and waiting. It looks like a plant now. And I wish we could all be like that for a while, especially now. The plants, despite being stuck in vases and gardens, are silently alive, imperceptibly growing and following a timeline that we humans will never be able to reach. What would it be like to have your senses spread throughout your body? Thousands of ears, eyes, genitals, mouths, fingers, on every surface, on every inch of your surface. How would we perceive time, the world, and others? Tonight, when I go to sleep, I will think about you, my failed patient zero. I will imagine you as a plant with long stems full of glossy green leaves. You will be sitting on a chair at the center of this room, breathing in, and out, keeping calm. My dear subscriber, my time is up, and I want to thank you for being the best remedy I've found so far. Before leaving, I need you to go back to the master copy of yourself and get back inside. When I count to three, you will open your eyes. One, two, three. Please remember to be safe and to rate me well. Thank you. Goodbye. Yeah, so that was uh, a piece of headphone art, I guess you can call it, commissioned for a, a podcast. And the work was called Safe, and it was by Davide Saborani from Italy. And I wanted you to listen to the whole thing because it doesn't really m make sense to cut it up uh, as it sort of uh, uh, revolves around this sort of uh, meditation or a hypnosis. So you have to sort of do the whole thing, I guess. Um, and it was also a little bit of a trip back to sort of the um, corona lockdown anxiety uh, 
that many people were experiencing, I guess, being isolated and by themselves. And this is also very much a reflection on being alone in a room and alone or being in a body and being uh, a self um, in solitude. And then there's this uh, coming back to what I said before about the augmented reality experiences or the extended reality experiences here, the, the narrator uh, or the voice tells us to imagine a body uh, on top of our body so somehow and it tells us to close our real eyes and then open our imaginary eyes and then there's this whole sort of uh, imaginary um, experience that you can have where you walk to your window for instance and you see people uh, imagine people that you've seen on the street and so on and so forth and it becomes almost sort of a sci-fi narrative um, and then and then back to reality again at the end uh, at the count of three so so almost like a hypnosis work um but also very much commenting on all of these different weird phenomenons uh the listener is is spoken to as as dear subscriber so it's it's i at least uh hear it as a sort of a comment on both that Podcasts are something you subscribe on, but also that this voice is is um, sort of uh, uh, based on these all these YouTubers who do these ASMR videos. Do you know what ASMR is? These videos where people will speak in these very soft voices with a lot of sizzly S sounds to make people goosebump and stuff like that. Uh, or it's a whole it's a whole scientific thing, I guess. Uh, ASMR wrote down it stands for autonomous sensory meridian response so it's basically a, the idea that we can for instance by sound stim, stimulus uh, be uh, have all these sensory uh, experiences in our spine uh, because of that being being stimulated to that um, and that's very much what this voice is trying to do also in the way that it speaks it's also very much a hypnosis voice or a meditation guiding voice or something like that um, so that's also an example um, of of something that that uses the podcast medium and even comments on the podcast medium and the whole culture of subscribing to digital uh, products uh, that are free um, to get some sort of uh, yeah to to acquire knowledge or to not be alone or to do all sorts of things and the theme in this one was very much solitude and being alone because it it was a, a, a work commission during the the corona lockdown but um let's go to something completely else because now we've had two works uh or two examples that were very much uh voice based and that had almost only the sound of a voice in them so i just wanted to play something with with uh, other many different sounds in it. Uh, and it's from a podcast called in Danish Uptail Hill, which I have a hard time to translating to English because it's sort of a pun on words. Uh, Uptail Hill, Uptail means both to record something like recording audio, but it also uh, means to be uh, preoccupied by something. It's a podcast that is made by two people, a, uh, uh, a couple who, well, they're both a, a married couple, but they're also working together as a, as a partner, uh, as, a, as a duo. And uh, one of them is a sound designer, or he's actually a jazz guitarist, I guess, but he's now working more as an electronic music and sound designer. And the other one is a choreographer and dancer um, they're called Nils Bjerg and uh, Christine uh, Andersen. And recently they moved to uh, West Jutland, to the countryside, and they made this podcast to sort of meet some of the people, uh, th their new neighbors, some of the people who live in that region of Denmark. This is a podcast recorded with binaural microphones um, to get a sense of, or to experience the world as the uh, protagonist in this uh, podcast experiences the world or to get as close to that experience as possible. And this is a guy named Pelle who lives in West Jutland. 
and he he's going to be speaking in Danish. It's not so important. He also has a really thick dialect, so maybe a lot of the Danish people won't understand him either. Um, it's not super important what he talks about. Uh, if I give you the right context, he in this part of the episode we are with him in his. He has this sort of workshop uh, where he can work with wood and other stuff. He has this sort of workbench, and he's uh, showing or demonstrating that workbench to the people recording him, um, Nils and Christine, who are also in the room. You can hear the, their voices sometimes. And then you can hear the sounds of the workbench as uh, Pelle hears it. And then uh, slowly the sounds are being um, manipulated into some sort of uh, musical thing. Um, it will It will make sense when you hear it. So I'll just I'll just place a few minutes of this. Det der, det er en af mine tænder lyder, ved hvad der foregår. Det skal lige være varmt. Det er sådan en uh, tusind eller en million gear, der er. Det er to uh, kilo omskiver, der kører imod hinanden. Så det skal lige varmes holdt op, inden det... Uh... Det kan du godt se. Hvad er det, vi hører nu? Det er kilo rømme. Vi prøver at stikke hovedet ned. Jeg lige har
og fortælle om de familier. Jamen, øh, jeg er jo øh, gift med Diana, og det er vi er I'm just gonna stop Pelle right there. Um, some of us, some of you might understand what he's saying. Uh, some might not. So uh, there's no reason to to carry on. But I'm just gonna show you a photo of sort of the setup that he has. Um, this is Pelle um, wearing uh, the setup. So he has these binaural microphones in his ears and this, the stuff you see is just wind protection or windshielding for the microphones and then um, here for the photos he's he's not but here you can see what it is he's doing in the in the in the clip we just saw so he's working with some wood and he has the microphones in his ears and he has a small headset here so what you hear is all those sounds from his workbench and the wood that he's uh, working with And then um, these sounds are sort of sampled and made into a musical score for him to uh, speak about himself or tell stories about his life. It's just an example of some of the stuff I was talking about in the beginning, how you can uh, use the podcast medium to actually place someone in, in a certain situation or in this situation actually sort of try to, what we're trying is placing The, you as the listener inside of Pelle's head somehow or making you as close to his experience of his sound world as possible and then manipulating that sound world uh, to give you sort of an uh, extended uh, experience of that or, or make the listener um, reflect more on these sounds and their qualities and their musical potential. And then each podcast episode is actually also um, released with this... Uh, dance performance uh, where all these sounds are being played in this 48 speaker system uh, surround system where where they fly around and the some of the dancers are holding some of these wireless speakers so that the sound is moving around the audience a lot to, to just e e furthermore expand on that experience or to make further abstractions on on these very concrete sounds so in the podcast you hear a lot of very concrete sounds Uh, and then they are sort of manipulated uh, to a level of abstraction where they uh, begin to point back at themselves as as sounds with certain uh, musical qualities or aesthetic qualities. Yeah, so that gives us around 10 minutes to uh, to maybe have some questions. If people have some questions, my slideshow is done and I've played all my examples, so I don't have any more, but I hope that... Uh, Did you got an idea of uh, some of the potentials in, in the podcast medium, what you can use it for besides uh, doing stuff that resembles radio? Yeah, I thought it was really nice also with the, the examples. Um, and it would be really nice if you could, if you have some kind of list of what have inspired you and maybe we could share it in somehow. Yeah, I can probably make some sort of list of, of uh, some inspirations. Sure, I'll try to make that. And I think maybe I can also send these slides or share the link to the slideshow for if people want to look back at it. And I'll write the examples in there. Um, and uh, yeah, and I can maybe on the last slide, I can just make a quick list of some stuff that I think is inspiring and that is, is uh, sort of in the same theme as all the stuff I've talked about. Yeah, sure. I will do that. Is there any other questions out there? Oh, there's one more here from Uwe. Um, does there have to be a presenter uh, slash voice? Is a voice uh, pre-requested uh, for good podcast? Or in, in your opinion, do you have any examples for of sound-based podcast only? That's a really good question, I think, because but it's also sort of my point that for some reason, Podcasts have gotten and inherited a lot of the characteristics and genres from radio. And one of them is having this voice sort of front and center speaking to the listener. And that is very effective. And that's why it's used in so many podcasts, I think. But um, you can distribute any sound content with the podcast system or uh, the podcast technology uh, supports any kind of, of audio file. So the the possibilities are endless. It's very common to have some sort of voice, 
But uh, in this podcast, for instance, there are also some some episodes, some works that are only sound based. Um, and actually, one of the others from this series, Isolationskunst, is a, an artist from Tehran in Iran who recorded because Tehran was on lockdown, so there was no traffic, and all of a sudden, you could hear. Uh, for instance, the sound of birds, and you've never been able to hear the sound of birds in Tehran, or you haven't for many years at least. Um, so she recorded that, and she recorded all these intimate... Um, well, she made this... The, the, the work is a collage of uh, recordings from her phone, and one of them was Birds in Tehran, which was a, a once-in-a-lifetime uh, uh, recording, and then there were a lot of recordings of her family and intimate situations, because uh, that was all... All of them were situations that were suddenly impossible to have. Um, so it's, it was sort of a, a nostal nostalgic uh, work in that way. Um, and there are other examples in this podcast of, of sound-based works. There are many expectations of there being a voice when you listen to a podcast. So sometimes it's good to maybe start with a voice, start with something that lives up to the expectations, and then completely deconstructing that expectation and taking it somewhere else. Um, I think that's a that might be a way to easily or easier um, meet the listener where they are and then take them where they didn't know they they were going. Um, but of course, it's possible to make a podcast that is completely without voices. Um, you could also just release your next album as a podcast, and it could be just music. It's a possibility. For oh, there's a question. There's one here in the I'm just going to bring out the mic to Christian. Hello. Yes, my name is Christian. I'm, among other things, teaching entrepreneurship at the school. Right. Um, I'm just wondering regarding, or well, you mentioned earlier that uh, one quality is that it's free, and of course that makes it uh, travel further and so on. But uh, do you have any thoughts about the monetizing the, this kind of content? For example, if you release your album there, how do you actually make a living of it? Mm. Yeah, so monetizing and podcasting is a hot topic uh, these days. Uh, in Denmark, for instance, uh, there there's recently been new um, people or new, uh, what's it called, new players on the market. There's a, a company called Podimo, an app called Podimo, and there's an app called TalkTown, and these are two examples of people uh, selling podcasts instead of podcasts being free. So you have, um, you have at least these two places where you can go for uh, exclusive Danish podcasts that you can only get uh, through a subscription to an app, uh, like you would have a subscription to Netflix or something like that. Um, and the way, so, so there you're monetizing the content, you're selling uh, podcasts that are mostly these uh, radio-like podcasts where people are uh, speaking together about a topic or some celebrities are telling jokes or um, uh, uh, someone's uh, telling a true crime sort of story or something like that. So that's a way of monetizing that. Um, the way most of the stuff we do at the Lake Radio is made uh is is through uh, we fundraise that through different kinds of foundations some from um, the national arts council and some from private fund foundations um because we want it to be free um so that's a way of 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 um, financing that um but there's i mean i hope that at some point, these uh, uh, paid podcast apps will also have uh, more artistic content that is then monetized. That would be a nice model. That would be great for the ecosystem of podcasts, for the ecosystem of, of artists also. Um, but I don't see it happening very soon. I see it as a thing in the future where, because right now we're at the point where we're uh, just starting to... Um, to get people to be willing to pay for podcasts. It's been something that people have expected to be free up until maybe a year ago, two years ago. So now we're only in, in that phase where we are trying to get people to actually want to pay for this kind of content. Like that people are just starting out to, to want to are willing. People are, are have just become willing to pay for newspaper articles online. People have just started 
or just become willing to pay for YouTube videos and stuff like that. So there's this whole process going on of monetizing uh, content that was before free and accessible. So I think in the future, it's possible to make something niche or uh, with a small target group and actually monetizing on it. But right now, I think we have to wait for the for the big players and the content that has very broad target groups to become monetized before you can sort of get in the slipstream of that and and exploit that. Yeah, take, yeah. Is that, is that a, does that answer your question? Thank you so much. I think, um, Rasmus, that's all the time we have for today. So yeah, thank you so much for coming. And uh, thank, you. thank you guys for thank sitting you for out the there. Invitation. Yeah. Thanks for listening out there. Yeah. <laughs> thank you.